Welcome to our journey into the mystical world of Egyptian mythology. Join us as we unravel the captivating tales of the gods and goddesses who ruled the ancient sands. From the mighty Are, the sun god, to the enchanting Isis, goddess of magic and motherhood, prepare to be mesmerized by their divine stories and timeless power. Discover the secrets of the afterlife with Osiris, and delve into the chaos of Set. From the sacred temples to the banks of the Nile, let's explore the rich tapestry of Egyptian deities that continue to fascinate and inspire us today. Let the adventure begin. R.A. Re. Ra's origins trace back to the early periods of Egyptian civilization, likely emerging from a fusion of local sun gods worshipped in different regions along the Nile. Initially associated with the city of Heliopolis, Yunu in Egyptian, Are gradually assimilated the attributes and characteristics of various solar deities, such as Adam, Horus, and Ammonius, as Egyptian religious beliefs evolved over time. The name Are itself derives from the Egyptian word meaning to create or to give birth, emphasizing Ra's role as the creator and sustainer of life. In some texts, Are is depicted as the self-created primordial deity, rising from the waters of chaos, none, at the dawn of creation. This concept aligns with the Egyptian belief in the cyclical nature of time, where creation emerges from chaos in a perpetual cycle of renewal. Attributes and Iconography Are is commonly depicted as a falcon-headed man, symbolizing his solar aspect, with a sun disk encircled by a serpent, Ureus, adorning his head. The falcon, a bird associated with the sun due to its keen sight and ability to soar high in the sky, represents Ra's dominion over the heavens. Additionally, Are is often depicted with the body of a human and the head of a ram, symbolizing fertility and virility. The sun itself is Ra's most prominent symbol, embodying his life-giving and illuminating power. Are is often depicted sailing across the sky in his solar bark during the day, symbolizing his journey from east to west, from sunrise to sunset. At night, Are undertakes a perilous journey through the underworld, where he battles the forces of chaos to be reborn at dawn, reaffirming the cycle of life and death. Roles and Functions Ra's multifaceted nature encompasses various roles and functions within Egyptian mythology, reflecting the diverse aspects of solar worship throughout Egyptian history. As the sun god, Are was believed to be the source of all life and the driving force behind creation. He was often invoked in prayers and hymns for protection, guidance, and prosperity, both in this life and the afterlife. Ra's association with kingship and divine authority made him a central figure in the ideology of pharaonic rule. The pharaoh, as the earthly embodiment of Horus, was believed to be the son of Are and the rightful ruler appointed by the gods to maintain order and harmony in the world. Are bestowed the divine authority upon the pharaoh, legitimizing his reign and ensuring the prosperity of the kingdom. In addition to his solar attributes, Are was also associated with other aspects of nature, such as the Nile River, which was crucial for agriculture and fertility in ancient Egypt. Ra's tears were believed to be the source of the Nile's annual inundation, which replenished the land and ensured bountiful harvests. Thus, Are was worshipped as a benevolent deity who provided for the needs of his people. Furthermore, Are was closely linked with Ma'at, the goddess of truth, justice, and cosmic order. Ra's role as the upholder of Ma'at ensured the stability of the universe and the harmonious functioning of society. Through his daily journey across the sky, Are demonstrated the eternal struggle against chaos and darkness, reaffirming the triumph of order and light. Significance and Worship Ra's significance in Egyptian mythology cannot be overstated, as he symbolized the fundamental principles of creation, order, and divine authority that governed Egyptian society for millennia. His cult enjoyed widespread popularity throughout Egypt, with numerous temples dedicated to his worship in major cities across the land. One of the most famous temples dedicated to Are was the Temple of Ammonius Are at Karnak, which served as the religious center of the New Kingdom and attracted pilgrims from all over Egypt. The temple complex featured colossal statues of Are and lavish offerings to honor the god's divine majesty. 
priests and priestesses conducted daily rituals and ceremonies to ensure Ra's continued favor and blessings upon the kingdom. Ra's worship also extended beyond Egypt's borders, especially during the period of Egyptian expansion and influence in the ancient Near East. Foreign rulers and peoples often adopted Ra into their pantheons, recognizing his universal significance as the supreme god of the sun and creation. Osiris The myth of Osiris is both captivating and intricate, reflecting the profound symbolism and spiritual significance embedded within Egyptian cosmology. Osiris was born to the sky goddess Nut and the earth god Geb, making him a member of the Ennead, the nine major deities of ancient Egyptian religion. From his birth, Osiris was destined for greatness, fated to become the ruler of both the earthly realm and the afterlife. Osiris's brother, Set, harbored jealousy and resentment towards him, desiring the throne of Egypt for himself. Set's envy ultimately led to treachery, as he devised a cunning plan to usurp Osiris's position. Set orchestrated a deceitful scheme, inviting Osiris to a banquet where he presented a magnificent sarcophagus. Set declared that whoever could fit perfectly into the sarcophagus would be its rightful owner. Seizing the opportunity, Set persuaded Osiris to enter the sarcophagus, only to seal it shut and cast it into the Nile River. Trapped within the sarcophagus, Osiris met his demise, drowning in the waters of the Nile. His body drifted downstream until it came to rest in the city of Byblos, where it became lodged in the trunk of a tamarisk tree. Meanwhile, Isis, Osiris's devoted wife and sister, embarked on a quest to locate his body and restore him to life. Through her unwavering determination and magical prowess, Isis retrieved Osiris's body and began the process of resurrection. With the assistance of the god Thoth, Isis successfully revived Osiris, albeit temporarily, allowing him to impregnate her before departing to the realm of the dead. Osiris ascended to become the ruler of the underworld, presiding over the judgment of souls and the eternal afterlife. His resurrection symbolized the cyclical nature of existence, emphasizing the themes of death, rebirth, and regeneration that permeated Egyptian mythology. The Symbolism and Attributes of Osiris Osiris embodied a multitude of symbolic attributes that held profound significance for ancient Egyptians. As the god of the afterlife, Osiris represented the promise of eternal existence beyond the mortal realm. His role as the judge of the dead underscored the importance of moral conduct and righteousness in Egyptian society, as individuals were judged based on their actions in life. Furthermore, Osiris's association with fertility and vegetation highlighted his role in the agricultural cycle. He was often depicted with green skin, symbolizing the regenerative powers of the Nile River and the rejuvenation of the land during the annual flooding. Osiris's resurrection served as a metaphor for the renewal of life and the cyclical nature of agricultural abundance. Additionally, Osiris was revered as a benevolent and compassionate deity, offering solace and guidance to the souls of the departed as they embarked on their journey through the afterlife. His role as a divine ruler and protector of the dead provided comfort to the living, reassuring them that death was not the end but rather a transition to a higher state of existence. Osiris in Egyptian Society The cult of Osiris played a central role in Egyptian religious life, permeating all levels of society from the pharaohs to the common people. Temples dedicated to Osiris were erected throughout Egypt, serving as centers of worship and pilgrimage. The most famous of these temples was located at Abydus, where Osiris was believed to be buried and where an annual festival celebrating his resurrection was held. The Osirian Mysteries, a series of rituals and ceremonies commemorating Osiris's death and resurrection, were conducted by priests and priestesses within the confines of the temples. These mysteries were shrouded in secrecy, known only to initiates who underwent rigorous training and purification rites to gain access to the sacred knowledge of Osiris. The cult of Osiris also exerted a profound influence on Egyptian funerary practices and beliefs surrounding death and the afterlife. The concept of the Ka, or spiritual essence, was central to Egyptian funerary beliefs, with individuals seeking to ensure the preservation and sustenance of their Ka in the afterlife. Rituals such as mummification, burial with funerary goods, 
and the recitation of spells from the Book of the Dead were performed to safeguard the deceased's journey to the realm of Osiris. The Enduring Legacy of Osiris Despite the passage of millennia, the legacy of Osiris endures as a testament to the enduring power of myth and symbolism. Throughout Egyptian history, Osiris remained a revered and beloved deity, inspiring devotion and reverence among the populace. His mythological narrative served as a source of comfort and hope, offering solace to those grappling with the mysteries of existence and the inevitability of death. Moreover, Osiris's influence extended beyond the boundaries of ancient Egypt, permeating the cultural and religious landscape of the Mediterranean world. The Greek historian Plutarch wrote extensively about the myth of Osiris in his work Isis and Osiris, contributing to the dissemination of Egyptian religious beliefs and practices throughout the Hellenistic world. In modern times, Osiris continues to captivate the imagination of scholars, artists, and enthusiasts alike, serving as a symbol of the enduring legacy of ancient Egypt. His mythological narrative has been reinterpreted and reimagined in various forms of media, from literature and film to music and visual art, attesting to the timeless allure of Egyptian mythology. Isis Isis, known as the Set in ancient Egyptian, was worshipped as a goddess of immense power and versatility. She belonged to the Ennead, the group of nine deities in Egyptian mythology who were believed to govern the universe. Among the Ennead, Isis was particularly renowned for her maternal and nurturing qualities, as well as her association with magic, fertility, wisdom, and protection. Origins and Family According to mythological accounts, Isis was born to the sky goddess Nut and the earth god Geb, alongside her siblings Osiris, Set, and Nephthys. Osiris, her brother and husband, played a pivotal role in her mythology, as did their son, Horus. This familial connection underscores the intricate interplay of relationships within the Egyptian pantheon and serves as a backdrop for many of Isis's myths and legends. Roles and Attributes 1. Maternal Goddess Isis was revered as a maternal figure, embodying the qualities of nurturing, compassion, and protection. She was often depicted cradling her son Horus, symbolizing her role as a loving mother and guardian. This aspect of Isis resonated deeply with ancient Egyptians, who sought her intercession for matters related to childbirth, child-rearing, and familial harmony. 2. Magic and Wisdom Isis was also regarded as a goddess of magic and wisdom. She possessed profound knowledge of arcane arts and was adept at spellcasting, healing, and divination. In mythological narratives, Isis demonstrates her magical prowess on numerous occasions, using her powers to aid her allies, thwart her adversaries, and navigate the challenges of the divine realm. 3. Fertility and Agriculture As a goddess associated with the natural world, Isis held sway over matters of fertility, agriculture, and abundance. Ancient Egyptians believed that invoking her blessings could ensure bountiful harvests, prosperous livestock, and the flourishing of life in all its forms. This connection to fertility tied Isis to the cycles of renewal and regeneration, making her a beloved deity among farmers, artisans, and those who depended on the land for sustenance. 4. Protector of the Dead Isis also played a crucial role in funerary rites and the afterlife. She was revered as a compassionate guide who helped souls navigate the perilous journey to the underworld and attain eternal rest. Through her magical abilities and divine patronage, Isis offered solace to the deceased and ensured their safe passage into the realm of Osiris, where they could enjoy everlasting peace and fulfillment. Myths and Legends 1. The Story of Osiris One of the most enduring myths associated with Isis is the tale of Osiris, her husband and brother, who was murdered by their jealous sibling Set. In her grief, Isis embarked on a quest to resurrect Osiris and restore him to his rightful place as king of the gods. Through her unwavering devotion and magical prowess, Isis succeeded in reassembling Osiris's dismembered body and conceiving their son Horus, who would later avenge his father's death and assume his divine inheritance. 2. The Secret Name of R.A. In another mythological account, Isis cunningly acquires the secret name of the sun god R.A., 
thereby gaining access to his boundless power. Disguising herself as an old woman, Isis befriends Ra and offers to alleviate his suffering by invoking his true name, which he had kept hidden from all. Moved by her compassion, Ra confides in Isis, who promptly seizes the opportunity to wield his name for the benefit of humanity, cementing her reputation as a masterful magician and protector of the vulnerable. Worship and Cults Throughout ancient Egypt, Isis enjoyed widespread veneration, with temples and shrines dedicated to her worship spanning the length and breadth of the Nile Valley. Her cult attracted devotees from all walks of life, including royalty, priests, peasants, and artisans, who sought her favor through prayers, offerings, and rituals. The annual festival of Dizia celebrated her divine attributes and role in the Osirian mythos, drawing throngs of pilgrims and participants eager to partake in the festivities and honor the goddess who held sway over life, death, and the cosmos. Legacy and Influence The influence of Isis extended far beyond the borders of ancient Egypt, permeating the cultural and religious landscape of the Mediterranean world. With the spread of Hellenistic and Roman civilizations, the cult of Isis gained prominence in Greco-Roman society, where she was syncretized with various deities, including the Greek goddesses Demeter and Aphrodite. Temples dedicated to Isis dotted the cities of the Roman Empire, attracting devotees who sought her blessings for fertility, protection, and salvation. Horus The origins of Horus trace back to the early periods of Egyptian civilization, with evidence of his worship dating as far back as the pre-dynastic period, circa 5500 to 3100 BCE. However, it was during the Old Kingdom, circa 2686 to 2181 BCE, that Horus gained prominence as a central figure in Egyptian mythology. The mythological narratives surrounding Horus are diverse and multifaceted, reflecting the cultural and religious complexities of ancient Egypt. One of the most prominent myths concerning Horus is the Osirian myth cycle, which revolves around the divine family of Osiris, Isis, and their son Horus. According to mythological accounts, Osiris, the god of the afterlife and the underworld, was murdered by his jealous brother Set, who coveted Osiris's throne. Following Osiris's death, his wife Isis, the goddess of magic and motherhood, embarked on a quest to resurrect him and restore order to the cosmos. Isis, with her magical prowess, managed to revive Osiris temporarily, and the divine couple conceived a son, Horus. Horus, born posthumously, became the rightful heir to Osiris's throne and the avenger of his father's murder. Thus, Horus's mythological role is closely intertwined with his quest for justice and the restoration of divine order in the world. Roles and Attributes of Horus Horus embodies various roles and attributes within Egyptian mythology, each reflecting different facets of his character and significance. One of Horus's primary roles is that of a celestial falcon deity associated with the sky, representing the soaring spirit and divine majesty of the heavens. As the son of Isis and Osiris, Horus is also revered as a symbol of kingship and rightful succession, embodying the divine right of pharaohs to rule over Egypt. Furthermore, Horus is often depicted as a protective deity, safeguarding the living and the dead from malevolent forces. In his form as Horus the Elder, or Horus the Great, he assumes the role of a benevolent guardian who watches over the sun god Ra during his nightly journey through the underworld. This aspect of Horus underscores his role as a defender of cosmic order and the eternal cycle of life, death, and rebirth. In addition to his protective functions, Horus is also associated with war and combat, particularly in his aspect as Horus the Avenger, or Horus the Warrior. In this guise, he embodies the martial prowess and ferocity of a divine champion, leading the forces of light against the agents of chaos and darkness, most notably his uncle Set, the god of chaos and disorder. Symbolism and Iconography The symbolism surrounding Horus is rich and diverse, reflecting the multifaceted nature of his mythology in cultic worship. One of the most iconic symbols associated with Horus is the falcon, which serves as both his sacred animal and emblematic representation. The falcon, with its keen eyesight and ability to soar to great heights, symbolizes Horus's vigilance, wisdom, and divine authority. Moreover, the eye of Horus, 
also known as the Wedjat or Ajat I, is a potent symbol of protection and healing in Egyptian iconography. Often depicted as a stylized human eye adorned with the markings of a falcon, the Eye of Horus embodies the concept of divine vision and perception, capable of warding off evil and restoring balance to the world. Another important symbol associated with Horus is the Pharaoh's crown, known as the Skent or Double Crown, which signifies his divine right to rule as the earthly embodiment of Horus. By wearing the Pharaoh's crown, Egyptian monarchs invoked the authority and legitimacy of Horus, reinforcing their role as the rightful heirs to the throne and custodians of Ma'at, the cosmic order. Moreover, Horus is often depicted wielding various weapons and implements of war, such as the was scepter and the tank symbol of life, symbolizing his role as a warrior and bringer of life and vitality to the world. Additionally, depictions of Horus wearing the Thureus, a stylized cobra emblem, symbolize his power and authority over the forces of chaos and evil. Cult Worship and Rituals The cult of Horus enjoyed widespread popularity throughout ancient Egypt, with numerous temples, shrines, and festivals dedicated to his worship across the land. The most prominent center of Horus worship was the city of Edfu, located in Upper Egypt, where the Grand Temple of Horus, known as the Temple of Edfu, was erected during the Ptolemaic period, 332-30 BCE. The annual festival of the Feast of the Beautiful Meeting, celebrated at Edfu, commemorated the mythical union of Horus and his wife Hathor, symbolizing the harmonious balance between the cosmic forces of order and chaos. During the festival, priests and devotees performed elaborate rituals, processions, and offerings to honor Horus and seek his blessings for prosperity, fertility, and protection. Furthermore, the mythological narrative of Horus's conflict with Set was reenacted through ritual dramas and ceremonies, symbolizing the eternal struggle between good and evil and the triumph of order over chaos. These rituals played a crucial role in reinforcing the moral and social values upheld by Egyptian society, emphasizing the importance of justice, righteousness, and divine kingship. Legacy and Influence the legacy of Horus extends far beyond the boundaries of ancient Egypt, permeating various aspects of world culture, religion, and symbolism. In addition to his significance within Egyptian mythology, Horus's imagery and symbolism have been adopted and adapted by numerous cultures and civilizations throughout history. In the Greco-Roman world, Horus was often syncretized with the god Apollo, due to their shared attributes as solar deities associated with light, healing, and prophecy. Similarly, the motif of the solar falcon found in Egyptian iconography influenced the development of avian symbolism in European heraldry in medieval art, where the falcon came to represent nobility, swiftness, and divine protection. Moreover, Horus's role as a divine protector and avenger served as a source of inspiration for various religious and mystical traditions, including Hermeticism, Gnosticism, and Alchemy. In these esoteric systems, Horus was revered as a symbol of spiritual enlightenment, inner transformation, and the quest for divine knowledge and wisdom. Anubis The origins of Anubis trace back to the early dynastic period of ancient Egypt, circa 3100-2686 BCE, with evidence suggesting that his cult began in the pre-dynastic period. Initially, he was depicted as a jackal or a wild dog, symbolizing death and the desert wilderness. Over time, his association with death became more refined, and he evolved into a deity closely linked with the afterlife, mummification, and the judgment of souls. Anubis' name itself carries significant meaning. The etymology of Anubis is subject to scholarly debate, but it is often associated with words meaning to decay or to putrefy, reflecting his role in the process of mummification and the preservation of the deceased. Additionally, his epithet, Imyut, translates to, he who is in the place of embalming, further emphasizing his connection to the funerary practices of ancient Egypt. Roles and Responsibilities Anubis played several crucial roles within the pantheon of Egyptian deities, each highlighting different aspects of his character and influence. Guardian of the Dead Anubis was primarily revered as the guardian and protector of the deceased. It was believed that he watched over the souls of the departed, ensuring their safe journey to the afterlife. 
In funerary texts such as the Pyramid Texts and the Book of the Dead, Anubis is often invoked to guide the deceased through the perilous journey of the underworld. God of Embalming, Anubis was intimately involved in the process of mummification, overseeing the preservation of the body for its journey to the afterlife. He was responsible for the ritual purification of the deceased and the wrapping of the mummy. Ancient Egyptians believed that Anubis supervised the embalming process with meticulous care, preparing the body for its resurrection in the afterlife. Weyer of the Heart One of Anubis' most iconic roles was as the Weyer of the Heart in the Judgment of Souls. According to Egyptian mythology, after death, the soul of the deceased would undergo a trial in the Hall of Ma'at, where their heart would be weighed against the feather of Ma'at, the goddess of truth and justice. Anubis presided over this solemn ceremony, ensuring that the scales remained balanced. If the heart was found to be lighter than the feather, signifying a life lived in accordance with Ma'at's principles, the soul would be granted eternal paradise. However, if the heart was heavy with sin, it would be devoured by Amit, the fearsome devourer of souls. Companion of Osiris, Anubis was closely associated with Osiris, the god of the afterlife and the underworld. In many myths, Anubis is depicted as the son of Osiris and his sister-wife Nephthys, making him a central figure in the Osirian cycle of death and rebirth. Anubis played a vital role in the resurrection of Osiris after his murder by Set, assisting Isis in the mummification and revival of the slain god. Symbolism and Iconography The iconic imagery associated with Anubis encapsulates the rich symbolism of ancient Egyptian religious beliefs. Jackal-headed deity, Anubis is typically depicted with the head of a jackal or a dog, symbolizing his association with death and the wilderness. The choice of a jackal, a scavenging animal often found in cemeteries and necropolises, underscores Anubis' role as a guardian of the dead and a guide to the afterlife. Funerary implements, in artistic representations, Anubis is often depicted holding various funerary implements, including embalming tools such as knives and flails. These symbols highlight his role as the overseer of the mummification process and the protector of the deceased on their journey to the underworld. Ankh and was scepter, Anubis is sometimes depicted holding the Ankh, a symbol of life, and the was scepter, a symbol of power and dominion. These symbols reflect Anubis' role in facilitating the transition from life to death and his authority over the realm of the dead. Black Color Anubis is frequently depicted with black or dark-colored fur, representing the fertile soil of the Nile floodplain and the regenerative powers of death and rebirth. The color black also symbolizes the mysteries of the afterlife and the unknown realms beyond mortal existence. Enduring Legacy Despite the passage of millennia, the legacy of Anubis continues to endure in popular culture and artistic representations. From ancient temple reliefs to contemporary films and literature, Anubis remains a captivating figure whose symbolism transcends time and culture. Religious Significance In modern times, Anubis continues to hold significance for practitioners of Egyptian Neopaganism and various occult traditions. His imagery and symbolism are often invoked in rituals related to death, divination, and spiritual transformation. Literary and cinematic depictions, Anubis frequently appears in popular literature, film, and television, where he is often portrayed as a mysterious and enigmatic figure associated with death and the supernatural. From Rick Riordan's, Kane Chronicles, to blockbuster films like, The Mummy, Anubis continues to capture the imagination of audiences around the world. Artistic Inspirations Anubis remains a popular subject for artists and sculptors, who continue to explore and reinterpret his iconic imagery in various mediums. Whether depicted in traditional Egyptian style or reimagined in contemporary art, Anubis' presence continues to resonate with audiences as a symbol of mortality, transcendence, and the eternal cycle of life and death. Thoth Thoth, also known as Jehudi in ancient Egyptian, was believed to have emerged from the primordial waters of Nun at the creation of the world. He was often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis, a long beak symbolizing his ability to probe deep into the mysteries of the universe. Alternatively, he was represented as a baboon, linking him to the lunar cycle and wisdom. 
As the god of writing and wisdom, Thoth was credited with inventing hieroglyphs, the sacred script of the ancient Egyptians. This association with writing and language elevated him to the status of the divine scribe, responsible for recording the deeds of both humans and gods. His mastery over language also extended to magic, making him the patron deity of magicians, scholars, and scribes. Thoth's association with the moon further emphasized his role as a harbinger of knowledge and enlightenment. The lunar cycle, with its phases of waxing and waning, mirrored the journey of the soul through life and death, a concept deeply ingrained in Egyptian religious beliefs. Thoth's connection to the moon also tied him to the cycles of time and the measurement of years, aligning him with concepts of order and cosmic balance. Mythological Narratives and Roles Thoth's importance within Egyptian mythology is underscored by his involvement in various mythological narratives and roles. One of his most prominent roles was as the scribe of the gods, responsible for recording the proceedings of the divine court and maintaining the cosmic order known as Ma'at. This role positioned Thoth as a mediator between gods and mortals, ensuring justice and harmony prevailed throughout the universe. In the myth of the weighing of the heart, Thoth played a crucial role in the judgment of the deceased in the afterlife. According to Egyptian beliefs, upon death, the soul would undergo a trial in the Hall of Ma'at, where the heart of the deceased would be weighed against the feather of truth. Thoth recorded the results of this judgment, ensuring that those found worthy would be granted eternal life in the field of reeds. Thoth's association with magic and knowledge is also evident in his role as the patron deity of the ancient Egyptian city of Hermopolis, known as Khmunu in antiquity. Here, he was venerated alongside his consort, the goddess Seshet, who was also associated with writing and knowledge. Together, Thoth and Seshet presided over the sacred rituals of writing and measurement, overseeing the construction of temples and the recording of historical events. Furthermore, Thoth was often depicted as a companion to other major deities, such as R.A., the sun god, and Osiris, the god of the afterlife. In the myth of Ra's journey through the underworld, Thoth accompanied the sun god, providing him with protection and guidance. Similarly, in the Osirian myth cycle, Thoth played a crucial role in the resurrection of Osiris and the restoration of order following his murder by Set. Symbols and Iconography Thoth's iconography is rich in symbolism, reflecting his multifaceted nature and diverse roles within Egyptian mythology. As the god of writing and wisdom, he is often depicted carrying a stylus and palette, symbols of his role as the divine scribe and inventor of hieroglyphs. Additionally, he is sometimes depicted holding a papyrus scroll, signifying his mastery over knowledge and literature. The ibis and the baboon are the two primary animal forms associated with Thoth, each carrying its own symbolic significance. The ibis, with its long, curved beak, symbolizes Thoth's ability to penetrate the mysteries of the universe and uncover hidden truths. In contrast, the baboon, known for its nocturnal habits and vocalizations, represents Thoth's association with the moon and the dissemination of knowledge. The lunar disk and crescent moon are also common symbols associated with Thoth, emphasizing his connection to the cycles of time and the measurement of years. Additionally, the papyrus plant, which grew abundantly along the banks of the Nile, is often depicted alongside Thoth, representing his role as the patron deity of writing and literature. Batet. Bastet's origins can be traced back to the pre-dynastic period of ancient Egypt, where she was worshipped as a lioness goddess associated with warfare and the protection of the pharaoh. In this early form, she was known as Bast, a fierce and formidable deity who embodied the ferocity and power of the lioness. However, over time, Bast's character underwent a transformation, evolving from a symbol of aggression and military prowess into a more benevolent and nurturing figure. This shift in perception coincided with changes in Egyptian society, particularly the rise of agriculture and the domestication of animals, which led to a greater emphasis on fertility and the nurturing aspects of life. As a result, Bast came to be associated with domesticity, fertility, and the protection of the home and family. Her image changed accordingly, with artists depicting her as a graceful and serene cat rather than a fierce lioness. 
This transformation culminated in the emergence of Batet, the goddess of domesticity and protector of the home, who became one of the most popular and widely worshipped deities in ancient Egypt. Symbolism and Iconography Batet is typically depicted as a lioness or a woman with the head of a lioness or domestic cat. In her lioness form, she embodies strength, ferocity, and protection, while her cat form represents grace, fertility, and domesticity. She is often depicted wearing a sun disc or lunar disc on her head, symbolizing her association with the sun and the moon, as well as her role as a guardian of time and cycles. One of Bastet's most iconic symbols is the sistrum, a musical instrument consisting of a handle and a series of metal rods that produce a jingling sound when shaken. The sistrum was closely associated with Bastet's role as a goddess of music, dance, and celebration, and it was often used in religious rituals and festivals dedicated to her worship. Cats themselves were considered sacred animals in ancient Egypt, revered for their grace, agility, and ability to hunt pests such as mice and rats. As the embodiment of Batet, cats were worshipped and pampered by the ancient Egyptians, who believed that they brought good luck and prosperity to the home. Mythology and Worship Batet was worshipped primarily in the city of Bubastis, Perbast in ancient Egyptian, located in the eastern delta region of the Nile. The cult of Batet was one of the oldest and most enduring in ancient Egypt, with evidence of her worship dating back to the Second Dynasty, circa 2890-2686 BCE. The annual festival of Batet, known as the Feast of Bubastis, was one of the most important religious celebrations in ancient Egypt. It involved elaborate processions, music, dancing, and feasting, as worshippers paid homage to the goddess and sought her blessings for fertility, protection, and prosperity. The festival also served as a time of pilgrimage, drawing devotees from all over Egypt who traveled to Bubastis to participate in the festivities. Batet was also closely associated with the goddess Hathor, who shared many of her attributes and functions. In some myths, Batet was depicted as the daughter of Are, the sun god, and the sister of Sekhmet, the lioness goddess of war. Together, Batet and Sekhmet represented the dual nature of feline deities, embodying both the nurturing and protective aspects of the divine feminine. Role in Egyptian Society Batet played a vital role in the lives of the ancient Egyptians, serving as a guardian and protector of the home and family. She was believed to ward off evil spirits and disease, ensuring the health and well-being of her worshippers. As a goddess of fertility and childbirth, she was invoked by women seeking to conceive or ensure a safe delivery. In addition to her domestic role, Batet was also associated with music, dance, and revelry, presiding over festivals and celebrations that brought joy and vitality to Egyptian society. Her influence extended beyond the home to include the realms of art, literature, and even warfare, where her ferocity and protective instincts were invoked by soldiers and warriors seeking her aid in battle. Decline and Legacy Like many ancient Egyptian deities, Bastet's worship declined following the rise of Christianity in Egypt, which led to the suppression of traditional religious practices and the destruction of temples dedicated to the old gods. However, her legacy endured through the ages, thanks in part to the enduring popularity of cats in Egyptian culture and the fascination with ancient Egypt that persists to this day. In modern times, Batet continues to be celebrated as a symbol of femininity, fertility, and the bond between humans and animals. Her image adorns everything from jewelry and artwork to tattoos and internet memes, attesting to her enduring appeal and relevance in popular culture. Sekhmet Sekhmet's name is derived from the Egyptian word Sekhem, meaning power or might, and Met, meaning to be satisfied or satiated. Thus, she is often interpreted as, the one who is powerful, or, the one who is satisfied. Sekhmet is typically depicted as a lioness-headed woman, symbolizing strength, ferocity, and protection. Lions were revered in ancient Egypt for their prowess in hunting and their association with royalty, and Sekhmet embodies these qualities to an elevated divine level. Her primary symbol, the lioness, represents not only physical strength but also the power to protect and defend. Additionally, 
Sekhmet is often depicted with the solar disk and the Uraeus, symbols of royalty and divine authority, further emphasizing her status as a formidable and sovereign deity. Mythology The mythology surrounding Sekhmet is rich and varied, reflecting her diverse roles within Egyptian cosmology. One of the most famous myths involving Sekhmet is her role in the Eye of Arig myth. According to this myth, Are, the sun god and ruler of the gods, became angered by humanity's disobedience and blasphemy. In response, he created Sekhmet from his own fiery eye and sent her to earth to punish humanity for their transgressions. Sekhmet embarked on a rampage, slaughtering humans indiscriminately and causing chaos and destruction wherever she went. The other gods became alarmed by Sekhmet's unbridled ferocity and devised a plan to stop her. They dyed beer red to resemble blood and poured it onto the fields where Sekhmet was expected to pass. Mistaking the beer for blood, Sekhmet consumed it voraciously until she became intoxicated and fell into a deep slumber. When Sekhmet awoke, she had transformed from a fearsome destroyer into a benevolent healer. She became known as the goddess of medicine and was revered for her ability to cure diseases and ward off illness. This myth illustrates Sekhmet's dual nature as both a bringer of destruction and a healer of wounds, embodying the Egyptian belief in the cyclical nature of life and death. Worship and Rituals Sekhmet was worshipped throughout ancient Egypt, but her cult center was located in the city of Memphis, where she was revered as the consort of the god Ta, the patron deity of craftsmen and architects. The Temple of Sekhmet at Memphis was a grand and imposing structure, adorned with statues and reliefs depicting the lioness-headed goddess in all her glory. One of the most important festivals dedicated to Sekhmet was the Feast of Sekhmet, which was celebrated annually during the Egyptian month of Thoth. This festival involved elaborate rituals, including processions, offerings of food and drink, music, and dance. Priests and priestesses would perform ceremonies to honor Sekhmet and invoke her protection and blessings upon the community. Another significant aspect of Sekhmet's worship was the practice of medicine and healing. Priests and priestesses of Sekhmet served as physicians and healers, using herbs, incantations, and magical rituals to treat the sick and afflicted. Sekhmet's association with healing made her a beloved and revered deity among the ancient Egyptians, who sought her aid in times of illness and crisis. Sekhmet's Relevance Today Despite the passage of millennia, Sekhmet's influence continues to resonate in modern culture and spirituality. In contemporary pagan and New Age movements, Sekhmet is often invoked as a symbol of female empowerment, courage, and resilience. Her fierce and unapologetic nature serves as a source of inspiration for those seeking to tap into their inner strength and assertiveness. Furthermore, Sekhmet's association with healing and medicine remains relevant in today's world, where the pursuit of physical and emotional well-being is a universal concern. Many modern practitioners of alternative and holistic medicine invoke Sekhmet's name and imagery in their healing practices, believing in her ability to aid in the recovery process and restore balance to the body and mind. In popular culture, Sekhmet has been depicted in various forms, from literature and film to art and music. Her image continues to captivate and inspire artists and storytellers, who draw upon her mythology and symbolism to explore themes of power, transformation, and the human experience. Ta Ta's origins can be traced back to the early periods of ancient Egyptian civilization, with references to his worship dating as far back as the early dynastic period, circa 3100-2686 BCE. He was primarily venerated in the city of Memphis, where he held a position of paramount importance as the chief deity of the local pantheon. Depictions of Ta often vary, reflecting the evolution of Egyptian art and religious beliefs over millennia. However, he is commonly portrayed as a mummified figure wearing a skullcap, with his hands emerging from the wrappings to grasp the Ankh, symbol of life, and the Was scepter, symbol of power. This imagery underscores Ta's association with both creation and regeneration, as well as his role as a divine ruler. One of Ta's most distinctive features is his association with the act of creation. In Egyptian mythology, 
Ta is often depicted as the primordial craftsman who brought the universe into existence through the power of his thought and the skill of his hands. He is frequently referred to as the great architect or the divine artisan, highlighting his role as the master craftsman of the cosmos. Ta's Creative Power The ancient Egyptians believed that Ta achieved the act of creation through the spoken word, uttering the divine command that brought forth the gods, the world, and all living beings. In the hymn to Ta, an ancient Egyptian text dating to the Middle Kingdom period, circa 2040 to 1782 BCE, Ta is described as the father of the gods, whose words shaped the heavens and the earth. Praise to Ta, the great, the Lord of heaven. The Lord of earth, the king, chief of all the gods. His beauty is great, his loveliness is perfect. Heaven was created when he uttered its name. Earth came into being at the sound of his voice. This hymn encapsulates Ta's creative power, emphasizing the divine authority inherent in his words and the transformative impact of his speech. Furthermore, Ta is closely associated with the concept of Ma'at, the ancient Egyptian principle of cosmic order and harmony. As the creator god, Ta is believed to have established the fundamental laws that govern the universe, ensuring balance and stability in the cosmic order. His creative acts are thus imbued with a sense of purpose and design, reflecting his role as the divine architect of Ma'at. Ta's influence on Egyptian art and culture. Ta's significance extends beyond the realm of mythology to encompass various aspects of ancient Egyptian art, culture, and society. As the patron deity of craftsmen and artisans, Ta was revered by those engaged in the skilled trades, including sculptors, metalworkers, and builders. In Memphis, the cult of Ta flourished, with the god's temple serving as a center of artistic innovation and religious devotion. The artisans of Memphis were renowned for their craftsmanship, producing exquisite works of art that adorned temples, tombs, and royal palaces throughout ancient Egypt. These artisans looked to Ta as their divine patron, seeking inspiration and guidance in their creative endeavors. One of the most enduring symbols of Ta's influence on Egyptian art is the famous Triad of Memphis, which depicts Ta, his consort Sekhmet, and their son Nefertum. This triad represents the divine family unit and underscores Ta's role as a nurturing father and protector. The imagery of the triad was widely revered in ancient Egypt, appearing in statues, reliefs, and amulets found in temples and tombs across the land. Ta's association with craftsmanship also extended to the realm of architecture, where he was revered as the divine patron of builders and architects. The construction of monumental structures such as temples, pyramids, and palaces was viewed as a sacred duty, undertaken with reverence for Ta and his role as the master builder of the cosmos. Ta's Legacy and Continued Reverence Despite the passage of millennia, Ta's legacy continues to endure in the collective consciousness of humanity. His enduring presence in Egyptian mythology reflects the timeless human fascination with the mysteries of creation and the power of divine craftsmanship. Moreover, Ta's influence can be seen in the enduring legacy of ancient Egyptian art and architecture, which continues to inspire awe and admiration to this day. The majestic pyramids, intricate temples, and exquisite artifacts crafted by the artisans of ancient Egypt stand as testaments to the enduring legacy of Ta and his divine patronage. In modern times, Ta remains the subject of scholarly inquiry and spiritual reverence, as researchers seek to unravel the mysteries of his ancient cult and explore the deeper symbolism inherent in his mythology. Moreover, Ta's imagery and symbolism continue to resonate with contemporary audiences, offering insights into the timeless themes of creation, craftsmanship, and divine authority. Thanks for diving into the captivating world of Egyptian mythology with me. If you enjoyed unraveling the mysteries of the gods and goddesses, don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating explorations into ancient cultures. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below, share your favorite Egyptian deity or any myths that left you spellbound. And remember, the journey through mythology is endless, so stay curious and keep exploring. Until next time, may the blessings of the gods be upon you. Farewell, fellow adventurers.